August arrived as a reminder that life truly goes in cycles. A period of slow, hazy summer that begins to fade away with the first fallen leaf, burnt grass, over-ripened apple on the ground, with a harvest of wheat that left the fields completely naked, resting quietly until next year when spring will come again with its new burst of energy. Time is moving too fast these days. Nature changes at an immense speed, barely giving enough time to enjoy this strange, melancholic month. As time moves too fast, I, on the contrary, give myself an opportunity to slow down. I've been away from social media, from screen, simply enjoying life swimming in lakes and rivers and the sea, picking ripe bilberries on a hill and blackberries from an overgrown bush by the river, shoving ripe fruit into my mouth, enjoying the sweet taste of fleeting summer. Just as the scorching August sunshine dawned on us in the south, I found myself escaping to the north instead, visiting Lake District for the first time ever. I rented a room in a 17th century cottage, filled with quirky details, paintings, dried flowers hung from the ceiling, young people in old paintings staring solemnly from the wall. This part of England still remained lush and green, rain falling on sunshine, sun glistening through the rain. Once mesmerized by the grit and the concrete walls of the city, I found myself dreaming of an escape. And there it was, in a form of mountains underneath my feet, and vast lands as far as the eye can see. I've come to know the seasons, the details I so often overlooked before. I've come to know the nature, the little subtleties of life that aren't that noticeable unless you observe them from the window overlooking the garden or field or, if lucky, this same type of vastness I was lucky enough to observe from the rented cottage, witnessing the abundant curiosity of life outside. I realized that I've summered enough this year. All day I've been looking outside in the anticipation of rain that has never come. The summer brought so much change into my life, if not external, then internal instead. In truth, I have lived a while in fear, and still am today. Not the kind of fear that comes from an immediate danger, but the one that envelopes you from within, overtakes your heart with worry, constantly whispering the same question, what if, at the depth of your mind. I tried battling this fear for as long as I can remember, as it comes and goes with seasons of life, but this time I let it stay in its own corner of my being. Live as it pleases and let it be heard when it demands an outlet for expression. I 
I noticed that the less I try to numb it, the quieter and calmer its voice becomes. I let it be and respect that this fear is something that lives inside my mind. Instead of trying to hold it tight and controlling it, I let it go and reformulate the burning question. Instead of what if, it's now what can I do? I found myself in a little woodland by the lake, ancient trees reflected in the crystal clear water. I stepped lightly, feeling the soft mossy ground underneath my feet. Time stood still, and so did the lake and the trees, and even my breath seemed to have escaped for a minute. I know I can't live in this moment forever, but I grasped greedily every second of it, imprinting it vividly in memories. I entered June a different person from now living in August. It wasn't an easy season, as when you experience change, no matter whether negative or positive, it's difficult to get used to the newer pace that difference between present and past has created. Life is a terribly impermanent thing in its core, and I witness it every minute of hour. But that's also something that keeps me going in anticipation. When the days grow short and the darkness grows thicker, we shift and learn to live differently, adjust accordingly to the change of time. This is all part of this reflective, slow-paced living. I hope you are enjoying your summer days to the fullest. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.